Come one, come all, it is your boy Jeremy with his final video in the series. Yes, if you have been watching this entire time, you know that I have been counting down the 20 seasons of Power Rangers, two seasons per video. That means this is the 10th and final video where I go over the last two seasons. Dino Thunder and RPM, RPM and Dino Thunder, you know what I'm here to talk about. The only thing you don't know is which is which. Now I'm going to preface this by saying this, I probably said it before, but the last few seasons, like three, four, or five seasons, like I love them all so much, I could make a great case for why any one of them is the best season of all time. I think I definitely come down to these two as the top two, and you know, it's September 2016, you could ask me in a month and I might change my mind. But right now, this is the order I'm going with, this is what I feel in my gut is the correct order. And it came down to one really deciding factor, and you might not be the factor you think of. The factor for me is what season would you give to a person who is not a fan of Power Rangers or who might be a lapsed fan and say, you know what, you've been missing out for a while. This is what Power Rangers can be at its absolute best. That is my deciding factor. And I thought about it before because I'm like, I want to, I want my, my best season of all time to really show Power Rangers at its core. And that's why number two on the list, I pulled, held up one finger, number two on the list is RPM. Well, Dino Thunder is number one. Yep, I'm revealing it right now. Here it is. And that's the thing. As much as I love RPM, it is not typical Power Rangers. As much as I love Dino Thunder, it is a prototypical season at its core, but it's Power Rangers at its absolute best. Now, I'll get into that in a minute. Let's focus on RPM. Little backstory on RPM if you don't know. Disney owned Power Rangers for a long time. They had been like, you know what? We're done with this franchise. We've gotten all the mileage out of it. We can. Let's cancel it, right? We're running. We're Jungle Fury finished airing, we're done, let's cancel this series. Oh wait, what's that? Oh, what's that? You've already started on on a new season, RPM? You've already hired this new guy, Eddie Gazalian? Okay, um, let him just do what he wants to. Let him finish, finish it out. We've already started, the money's already there. Let him finish his season, and then we're done with it. So basically, he was a kid, you know, left with the play box, but, um... No supervision, really. So he was allowed to do what he wanted to. And I think what he produced with RPM was an absolutely fantastic season. But there's no other season out there like it. Which is cool for it in its own respect, but as much as I like it, I wouldn't show it to somebody who's a lapsed fan because they would watch that and they would say, oh my gosh, this is Power Rangers now? This is amazing. I can't, see what com I can't wait to see what happens next. And what happens next is Samurai, or the reversioning, I guess. Not great things to show people. So RPM is amazing as it is, it is, it is just this island onto itself, right? Now RPM, you know, it, did, it broke a lot of conventions, right? The monsters didn't even talk. Um, the first episode, you barely even saw the core three rangers in the last few seconds. Uh, as soon as we got, you know, we got the groundwork for how the series worked, we immediately cut to these one-off episodes, you know, Ranger, Ranger Blue, Ranger Yellow, Ranger, you know, Red, all these different episodes. It really messed with the form of the Power Rangers, and I love that so much. I thought that was such an amazing thing. Even just with the credits, you know, or at the end, it was just, you know, the black with the white font. It was just, it was just this very unique, amazing thing. Um... And it's just one of those things, though, where it's like, okay, as much as I love you, RPM, like, I don't know, and I don't want to harp on it too much, because, you know, it's hard to say bad things about the series, but it did straddle that line between this is Power Rangers and this is this other thing, you know, onto itself. Now, great things about uh, RPM. Fantastic cast. Top to bottom. A lot of these people that are in RPM are doing other things now, you know? You've got, um, you know, Jessica Jones, uh, Rain, iZombie, like all these big shows. The cast members from RPM are leads 
in these series. Like they're doing amazing, amazing things and rightfully so. And everybody knows I love my man of mixed emotions, James Galen as Mason Effin Truman. It was just this very interesting relationship because you have, you could ha have just uh, Mason Truman as, you know, Scott's dad. It's not, it's not atypical for one of the Rangers parents to be there as like an authority figure. And then you also have Dr. K, which, okay, we all knew from episode one with the voice that it was obviously a female, but... Dr. K was such an interesting character because she was so juxtaposed to uh, Mason Truman. You know, he's this military man, works for the government. He's trying to keep everything together. And then you have Dr. K who was kidnapped by the government and they screwed with her. So there's like just a direct um, conflict there. And they do butt heads quite frequently with their different points of view because he's very logical, very by the book. And she's, you know, I mean, let's be real. Like the government effed with her head hardcore. And yes, she created the Vengex virus. I mean, oh my god, we actually have one of those crazy mentor figures that unlike Gosei and Zordon, like, they directly screwed things up. This is, this is almost as, this is as bad as friggin' Keeper just killing all the dinosaurs, right? It's just, and it's just some fascinating, fading, um, dilemma there because you're like, on one hand, you know, like, the government made her like this so desperate to get out and they are the ones that stopped her from fixing her program, but on the other hand, she did make the program that took over the world, you know? So it's like, you know, moralistic questions like that. Um, and then Gem and Gemma. I'm like, okay, sidebar about Gem and Gemma. This might be a ranger board thing, this might be an online thing, whatever in general, but like, people who don't like Gem and Gemma, who think they're just too goofy and that they don't fit with RPM, I don't think you understand Gem and Gemma. They were messed up, first by the government, then by Vengex, being on the run by themselves for years. Like, reverting to, like, childhood um, mentality is kind of like a, a PTSD sort of thing, where it's like, that's self-preservation. Like, you've been completely mentally fried, and it's tragic that they act like that. I mean, it's funny, don't get me wrong, it's funny. When you saw them draw their map, like, I'm sorry, that's hilarious. But it's also, like, tragically sad. And I think that's one of RPM's biggest strengths. Because you have a show that's supposed to be set in this Poca post be, 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 I almost said Pocahontas universe. Post-apocalyptic universe. And on one hand, you still have the jokey fun nature of Power Rangers. But on the other hand, you still deliver the seriousness of the world that they live in. And I think that's a very uh, delicate balance. And I'm very impressed by the way they were able to do that. People look at that dumb fan film. Yeah, it's dumb. Power slash Ranger. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is adult Power Rangers. Look at the blood and the sex and the drugs. And I'm like, I'm like, bitch, please. That is easy to do. Anybody absolutely anybody can go for adult with that simplistic crap and don't get me wrong there's there's room for all that stuff you know in its own small little doses if it makes sense but to just throw that all out there and say this is the new power Rangers for adult fans it's it's cheap it's cheap and easy um but like freaking the way rpm did it like i mean that's clever that's, that's clever and that's a balancing act and it might not be as dark and gritty as you want it to be, but it still maintains a lot of Power Rangers essence while still giving us this, this unique tone. And I was always very, very impressed by that. The cast of RPM is just fantastic. Um, their motivations, like, I mean, they're all very unique characters and like when they want to be funny, their, their humor actually works. When they need to be serious, it's not too dour. Um, one of the ones I would say is a little bit weak is not the character of Summer as a whole, but the way they introduced her with her whole posh background and just, it just came off very silly and very not of the overall tone of the series. I think it was kind of cheap and in the sense that, oh, let's bring it back with the arranged marriage and like, I'm sorry, but you can't have any of this affluent crap in a post-apocalyptic world. Like it just doesn't work. That sort of stuff breaks down pretty quickly, I would imagine. So I, I don't think that was the best, but I think I understand that the whole idea of 
let's take this character that was that you know that never did anything on her own and make her incredibly self-sufficient which is a fine personality trait it's the one you want to go for especially if for the longest time she's the only female on the team but I think her origin story was a little not very creative and a bit lacking, especially compared to the others. And I mean, even Flynn. Like, I mean, Flynn's always an interesting character because you look at his story and you're like, okay, his is kind of just jokey. But it's interesting because even in this world where everything is going, going to hell, he has this amazing moralistic sense. Like this superhero is a real sort of idea. And you really need that. I mean, because you have Ziggy who's the comic relief but he still has actual real grounded serious moments like his ties with the mob stuff like that so to have this Flynn character it's just it's just it's this very necessary component I think to juxtapose him against the, the world they live in and he still understands the world like you know he's not completely head in the clouds gem and gem with traumatic style but he just always sees the best in people, and, and that's a very undervalued trait, I would say. And Scott, uh, he doesn't necessarily go down the road of, like, being that whiny little brother, because he comes close to it at times, but I think he still maintains his, um, his strength. And, you know, I mean, let's be real, it's tragic. He lost his older brother, and he, and he still works for his dad more than anything. Like, uh, it's... It's not an easy life, and I think they definitely balance those traits very well. And the thing about RPM is it just has this very nice flow. It, it very rarely devolves into the whole, oh, a ranger has a flaw, and the, and the bad guy notices it, and they create a monster that exploits that flaw. None of that. It's like trying to break into the actual Corinth city. Like, it's actually more of a life and death matter, it feels like. And it's not necessarily as focused on the Rangers as individuals. You get lots of individual moments from them. You know, and episodes are definitely more focused on one specific Ranger than another. But it doesn't really go formulaic in that sense. Like I said, the monsters don't even talk. Like, that's not even part of the whole thing. And some stuff that it does, like, we, we've seen before with the whole... Um, you know, with the whole, oh, the sister, obviously, Tanaya's his sister. Like, everybody knew that from day one, the same way that they knew Astronomo was Andros's sister. Like, that's not even... One second. We interrupt this video for mail. It's mail time, guys. What did I get? Oh, that's a that's a board game. Sorry about that. I'm gonna get back to my video. This this is very real time. This is this is me. Look, guys, like, legitimately, I've said it before, I'm not joking, I just one-take my videos, I just speak off the cuff. I could do all the fancy editing, but, like, it just doesn't feel like me, you know? I just want to just, you know, just pour it out there, you know? Be very, very frank. Anyway, what was I saying? Tanaya. See? I remember. Tanaya, yes. Yes, you know that she's Dylan's sister from from day one. Like that's not a, that's not something that's hidden. Just like Andros and and, and Astronema, that wasn't a very hidden thing. But I think the way they play it is fairly clever. Like they actually really earn that moment. Like they actually show the Rangers really trying to piece this together. And when we actually get it, like there's a lot of tragedy in there, and. Of course, everything, everybody wins out in the end, but they don't just follow any simple formula. That's my whole thing, is that you get the character bits when they're necessary, and you don't let the character lessons completely drive the show. And I think that's what's, that's what's incredibly important. Um, again, that's, what, that's my whole thing about um, RPM as a whole. I just think that it was very good at subverting expectations um, you know, like, I mean, they use the dumb band from Go Wanger. That's the thing. Like, I mean, you can't say it enough, but the source material Go Wanger and RPM 
just couldn't be more different than one another. You know, we have seasons where they're very where the Sentai and the Power Rangers season are quite similar to one another, and you're like, okay, that's kind of lazy. And then you have ones that are fairly different but have some similarities. Like these two are just night and day, and obviously they mock it. The anime eyes on the on the mecha, the spandex being mocked, all that sort of stuff. Like it's just very refreshing to see a show that is willing to take chances and unfortunately we know how that played out. Eddie went over budget, he was removed, Chip took over. Um, I know Chip's finale was not exactly what what um, Eddie had in mind. I know there was definitely some similarities, I'll say that, but I think that uh, Chip did a phenomenal job of picking up as best as he could and trying to give a satisfying end to the series. And he still actually carried over a lot of the episodes, because episodes were written before he took over, and he pretty much shot them as they were. But uh, RPM is just one of those series where I think that it shows... It's hard, I, don't, I don't know the proper way to word this, because it shows Power Rangers not at its best, but it shows its potential. That it can change to be whatever you need it to be like it can be any type of show like while still maintaining you know the trappings of the super sentai origins and i think that's something that we forget a lot like because you hear people say that like oh they were written into a corner or they had to do this because of the footage or blah 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 and sometimes that's true but sometimes the limit there is not the footage the limit is the imagination of the person creating the product always remember that so that's why, I mean, that's why RPM is number two for me. Phenomenal series. One of the best series of all time. You will love it. I promise if you have any sort of inclination towards Power Rangers. But just know that it is very much its own beast. You know, it is just a very unique um, animal. And by the way, I keep saying that, like, if you haven't seen it, you should watch blah, blah, blah. And yet I'm giving away all these spoilers. So, like, <laughs> you've seen it. What am I even talking about? Anyway, moving on. Number one. Power Rangers Dino Thunder, yes, Dino Rangers Roar, Power Rangers Score, all that good stuff, all those nursery rhymes. Power Rangers Dino Thunder are my absolute favorite series. And it's funny because, here's a, here's a story for you, if you look at my, at my knuckles, you'll, you might be able to see that this one right here is a little lower than the others, and there's a tiny little scar. I don't know if you can see that. The reason why that scar is there is because, I don't know, 2002, 2003, whatever it was, um, I'm sitting at home, ABC Family's on, watching some Ninja Storm, probably a rerun of Ninja Storm, and a commercial comes on. My name is Dr. Tommy Oliver. Wham! No joke, I punched the wall. And that happened. Because, again, if you know me at all, if you've listened to No Pink Spandex, if you've seen me on Ranger Board back in the day, anything, you know that historically I am known as somebody who despises the character of Tommy. I don't like the fact that he got all the focus. I don't like the fact that he came off way too friggin' important. I don't like the fact that they gave him all this... I mean, he just, I mean, just, he just wasn't a fun, interesting character. And they just milked him too too much, and I just, oh, just have no time for the Tommy character. So when I hear that he's going to be in Dino Thunder, I don't like it. That being said, I think he did a very good job um, in Dino Thunder. And that's another thing, just a sidebar for people out there. I've said this before, but it bears repeating. Never confuse a character with an actor. If you don't like this character on screen, that is not a that is not a moratorium on the actor. In the same now, don't get me wrong, they could both be great, they could both be awful, one could be great, one could be awful, it doesn't matter. Anything is possible. The thing all I'm saying is judge them both individually. Don't get so wrapped up in the character you see on TV that that makes you immediately pass judgment on the human being who played that character. Because a lot of times if someone is supposed to be annoying, that like that's in the script. And so they're just doing a good job of acting. Not necessarily always true, but just throwing that out there. But I think what Dino Thunder did well with Tommy is 
they made him that mentor character he needed to be. He was that voice from the past. A past dinosaurs. Anyway, voice from the past, but he didn't take over. Yes, he had two episodes that were very much focused on him, but two episodes out of like 38, that's, that's fair. That's more than fair. So for Tommy to get that, you know, like, I think they used him very well. Like, he gave them information when he needed to. He didn't, didn't withhold them, hold it Zordon style. But, well, I mean, he did make some mistakes. Like, you know, there was the time that he admitted that he helped create the Tyranno drones, which are just mindless foot soldiers, which he's had experience with. And the whole, you know, let's create a monster that can mind control people. monster that can mind control people and mindless foot soldiers created by Tommy. What use would those things have other than to terrorize people? Tommy is a psychopath. Just throwing that out there. But yeah, anyway, that's probably why Haley did a lot of the stuff that actually was useful. Just, you know, just a thing. Just, just, you know, that happened. But no, for real. When I look at Dino Thunder, I look at it as Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but a more realistic, modern approach. Because, let's be real, Power Rangers, you had the jock, you had the fun guy, you had the nerd, you had the valley girl, you had the sort of alternative chick that could, you know, mediate, that sort of thing. And you just put them all together in episode one, you're like, oh, they're all best friends, they all get along. Like, I'm sorry, I've gone to school, I know that doesn't happen. And so then Dino Thunder takes the more, the most obvious ones, the jock, the alternative chick, and the nerdy guy, and they say, you know what? They're not best friends. In fact, they don't really like each other at all. They mock each other in the first two episodes. But they got bonded to these gems, so they're going to have to figure out a way to work together. Like, that's cool to me. I really enjoy that. I love that concept because it actually makes it feel like this could happen to you. You know, like, yeah, all the uh, the out of the world craziness that happens to get to that point, but it actually feels grounded. And that's what Power Rangers need sometimes is because, yes, it's spandex and sparklers and monsters and all that crap. But it does need to feel like it could at least somewhat exist in the, in the real world. And that's something that this this show got very right. And it also did the whole thing where like, OK, it's not just, you know, some random character flaw like these are like real problems the rangers have with other people and with themselves and like it actually it's not just stuff that happens one week and is forgotten the next you know like they plant seeds for stuff like god forbid the guy who's the sixth ranger is actually there early on just like he was in the previous season again doug and great job he's there so that by the time he gets the powers you're like okay he's an established character and he's related to the bad guy and so when this happens to him oh i see the flow of how we got to that point and I can believe it, you know? Which is something that's unfortunately rare in Power Rangers. All too often, the Sixth Ranger doesn't show up until he's the Sixth Ranger. Which, you know, I feel like, you know, I understand maybe it's a budget thing to try to save on an extra actor until we get to that point or whatever. But, like, having them there is, is, is a very key thing. And that was the fun thing about Dino Thunder was that it just felt like a very cohesive universe in the sense that there were always little seeds, you know, and they were always slowly advanced in the plot here and there. And yes, we always had our wacky one-off episodes like a lot of seasons have, but the, in the background, you know, stuff was actually moving in a certain direction. And a lot of seasons lack that. A lot of seasons will just have silly episodes, blam, 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 and then we're five episodes away from the series finale, and it's like, oh, crap, we need to have some sort of plot, don't we? So there's a big final battle. And when you integrate that stuff instead, you just come up with a much better show overall. That's why Dino Thunder is one of those few series where I'm like, I could watch any episode of Dino Thunder at any time, and I could just be enthralled. They're just very fun, fun characters. Again, a phenomenal cast. I gotta say it again. Uh, I mean, Napier, he made he made the Jot character that, like, was kind of a dick. But he also, you could see the good side in him a lot of the time. He, you know, he actually worked to create a relationship with a girl where he wasn't just self-involved. And wasn't just doing jockey dumb bro things. And it took a while to get there, but he actually earned it. And God forbid, he made smart decisions. Like, 
Trent is this evil ranger and he becomes good, but he screwed with us before, so it's like, okay, I understand you want a piece, Kira, you know, and you want to be a trusting guy, Ethan, but like, um, this dude messed with us, so I'm not going to automatically trust him as a good guy who's part of our team now. Like, that's realism. That's not silly rangerness. Like, I mean, think about the end of, uh, end of Green with Evil, where it's just like, oh, Rita's spell is broken. Oh, right, let's pose and morph and blah, blah, blah. Like, this dude just tried to just screw with you for five episodes. Like, come on, man. Like, have some agency. Like, stuff needs to actually impact you, and you need to impact it. You know? Stuff like that. And that's, that's what Dino Thunder got right just so much, is that it just, hmm, everything felt tangible, you know? When, I mean, oh, yeah, there's, there's invisibility. Uh, that's a joke in there somewhere. But no, everything just felt very tangible. Like, the characters played off each other incredibly well. And then, I mean, you even evolved the whole Bulk and Skull concept with Cassidy and Devin, where they were so involved in the Rangers' actual day-to-day -day lives. And they actually evolved as characters in their own right, and by the end, they really earned their spot as trusted confidants. Like, I can't say enough good things about friggin' um, um, Katrina Devine. First as Mara, and then as Cassidy. Like, she's just a solid, solid actress who's just so good at the comedy. And she still has, you know, very much a heart in her character. Like, they would have episodes here and there where you could see her growth as a character. And she was still up for anything with the physical comedy. Like, just, just absolutely fantastic. I, I can't say enough good things about her and about the whole cast of, of Dino Thunder. Just amazing actors, top to bottom. Really, really great, great at their craft and embracing the, the whole Power Rangers style. Um, what else? Wow. It's just one of those things, you know, where it's like RPM and Dino Thunder. I love them so much. I just want to sit here and gush about them. Um, but, oh, and then it kind of gets you a little tongue-tied. Um, bad things about Dino Thunder. I gotta say a few things. Zeltrax. Again, I love, I love James Galen, but the whole Smitty thing, very weak. Granted, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, it should have been Jason or Kimberly or whatever, where it's just like, come on, nostalgia nerds, get over yourself. But his whole story was very, very weak. Uh, them dropping the Kira and uh, Trent storyline. I mean, it sounds like they were basically told to do that, which sucks. But I wish they would have just had some sort of closure to it. Like, have them actually stopping a couple or something like that. Um, the other big one would be the final Mezagog monster stuff. Like, they first they repaint the trailer from Ninja Storm to get in. And it's like, okay, that's yeah, a little forced. And then he just looks like some reject from the Super Mario Brothers movie. Just that final form was just pretty, pretty weak. Uh, what else? Um, one of the one of the big things actually I would say that's good. Speaking of the one of the last points is Ethan and Cassidy. Very, very interesting in the respect that they said, you know what? Let's play this like an actual relationship. Like everybody in these shows doesn't need to just fall in love and become best besties forever. You know, like. Okay, we met with a personality profile online. We were a little apprehensive because we knew each other and weren't super big, like, friends or anything. But we went out on a couple of dates. We tried, and it didn't work. Oh, <gasps> shock! An actual human relationship that happened that played out in the way it does in the real world. What a fascinating concept. Let's do that again. Like, just, just little things like that show that Dino Thunder actually had a bit of maturity to it. You know? Again, as much maturity as you can given the subject matter, but still. And it has some great visuals too. Like, I mean, who doesn't still get a little haunted by the whole Mercer Mesagog transformation, the way they did that? Just fantastic. And I mean the comedy was on point. When it tried to be funny, it was. Um, I don't think it was quite the level of RPM comedy, but it was really, really solid. Like it was the comedy was fairly intentional when it actually happened. Also, fantastic team up. They 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 did the team up formula the way I always say it should be done, and that's you focus mostly on the old team because this is their last hurrah. You give give us an idea of what's been going on since we last saw them. Have a really cool fight between both teams of Rangers, unmorphed by the way, which is fantastic. And then you bring them together, like it's a simple concept, but so many team ups fail at it and belabor the point with all these other nonsensical side stuff that don't really go anywhere. It's just more footage. Uh, but yeah, like, 
Dino Thunder, it's 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 hard to encapsulate it, but really, what I said at the beginning, I think I think bears repeating. It is MMPR, but it is more conscience conscious of what it should be of what of a more realistic take on the whole concept it has that sort of warm fuzzy familiar feeling you know that sort of feeling you get in the winter time when it's cold outside and you snuggle up and you get that hot cocoa like that sort of feeling of that hot cider and you know it's that comfort food sort of thing but it also doesn't insult your intelligence in the slightest and it has broader concepts than a monster of the week filled mmpr season and truly, if people ask me what's a good Power Rangers season to watch, I've been watching a long time or I've never really seen the show, I just know the big idea of it, I give them Dino Thunder. Even if you don't know who Tommy is, like they give you enough information that you can figure it out and, and get enough out of him. So, and Haley, Grin, another great actress. Like I just love the Haley character where they didn't have to put the onus on, you know, the guy who likes to invent mind controlling dino monsters to be the one who invents all of their stuff all of their gear to try to force him into being Billy. And so, I mean, it just works really well, you know? Just a fantastic, fantastic show overall. You know, I mentioned the minor faults, which, you know, do impact the series as a whole, but I don't think they're enough to detract from the whole, the whole, um, structure, I guess would be the word I'd go with there. So again, just a fantastic series. I can't say enough about Dino, there are enough good things about it. And, the Aubrey Killers the White Ranger suit, just one of my absolute favorites. Love the suits as a whole for the series. Just, just a great, great, great um, series, and one that if you somehow haven't seen it, been living on a rock, go for it. And I think that's it, guys. I think that is my full review of all of the seasons of Power Rangers. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any ideas for other countdown lists you'd like to see, I would absolutely be willing to hear them. Like favorite suits, favorite villains, I don't know, whatever concept you have in your in your minds, favorite whatever color rangers, I don't know. You know, anything, I'm, I'm willing to hear it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series as a whole. Um, as always, here's my spiel. Like this video if you liked it. Comment on this video if you have something interesting to say, or just want to say anything, I don't really care, whatever, just say something. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, I really appreciate that. Biggest thing you can do to help me, share this video with anybody you know that you think might enjoy this, might want to hear the ramblings of some doofus, um, whatever, you know, man, I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, where I will have some more fantastic unboxings, hey, maybe I'll show you this game. This game's called Secret Hitler. Might want to Google that. Maybe I'll show you that. I don't know. But I will see you very soon with another exciting video. I am Captain Subpar, a.k.a. Jeremy, signing out, and I'm going to be king of the nerds. Dino branches roar. I'm going to fall on the floor.